Week three in MLS and some testing conditions to contend with. We've got 14 games coming your way, including a belter in the blizzard at Gillette Stadium. The reigning champions NYCFC were back at their home for the first time since winning MLS Cup. But we begin in the West with two teams whose seasons couldn't be more different so far. Two wins. Lift off on every weekend for the Galaxy. Versus two defeats. Godoy scores. Two goals for. Alvarez trying his luck, it's a goal! Two goals against. And they've done it again to Seattle. A symmetry the Sounders sought to spoil and the Galaxy intended to keep. Commentary comes from David Connolly and Dan Roebuck. Greg Vanny has managed to get one or two familiar faces to come to the LA Galaxy. It's always an easy sell given their background. That's a decent looking ball as well. Big chance for you know who on the edge of the six yard box to rifle home and put the Galaxy in front. It's the golden boy once again. Chicharito strikes inside the opening six minutes. Oh, it's a fantastic finish. But it's Edwards that makes this again, as he did against NYC FC. It's a brilliant run. Laid on a paper, Chicharito finishes it, as he has been doing his whole career. Out swinger towards Roldan, and it should be forced on by Morris, it is! Well, it almost happened in slow motion, but Jordan Morris in the right place at the right time. Superb out swinging delivery, they get the little flick on from Roldan at the near post. Not a clean connection on the first time finish from Morris, but as he's lying on the ground, he just sweeps it under bomb. Roldan breaks free on the right-hand side. Terra will take it down, indulges in some ball-juggling skills. Morris waits, shoved over by an oh! And Alan Chapman points to the spot. Yeah, Montero does magnificent here, just nicks it away for Rancho, and that is a penalty, make no mistake. Montero taking responsibility here after netting from 12 yards in midweek. What about in Major League Soccer? It is Montero, same side, same results, and the Seattle Sounders lead by two goals to one. Yeah, really well taken from Montero. Sends Bond the wrong way. So Douglas Costa, Chicharito, who will it be? It is Douglas Costa with a hit. Oh, and he's gone in. Fry, wrong-footed. And the Brazilian has got his first LA Galaxy goal. And we're all level at Lumenfield. Fry, who's just wrong-footed, is expecting the ball to go to his left-hand side. I think it's Yaimar just deflects off his head, trying to clear the ball and takes it past his own goalkeeper. Douglas Costa lets the ball come across his body. Still coming for Cabral to his left, Chicharito to his right. Here is Cabral, just got a bit too much on that one. Cabral to curl, oh, he's in the post! Wonderful strike, just not quite enough bend on it. Oh, he's so unlucky because he was initially just forced a little bit wider than he probably would have liked. You can see what he's trying to do, just bend this into that far corner. Opportunity here for the Sounders, curled in, and the header hits the post, Bond was beaten. That's an excellent delivery, isn't it? I've taken a slight deflection as well on its way through, I think it's Ariega with the contact. As you say, Bond was beaten. João Paulo for Alex Roldan, to big brother Christian. Roldan again, decent looking ball in! This time! goal, see Seattle take the lead, denied by the frame of the goal previously, Seattle 3, LA Galaxy 2. What I like about this set piece, they just changed the angle, they moved the ball out wide, the final cross in from Roldan is a really good one, completely unmarked, five yards out, lovely glancing header into the far corner. From 
steer forward. Alvarez, they're backing away from Efra. Alvarez! Oh, he's in the crossbar! And the overhead is on the roof of the goal. Boy, oh boy. Well, this is almost a carbon copy of his goal against Charlotte. From an identical position, they just back away. They've not learned anything. Got to close the ball down. That is so unlucky. Full time here, the Seattle Sounders three, the LA Galaxy two. It's just another game to learn from. Just like we learn from Nashville, just like we learn from RSL, we'll pick different parts of this game to learn from as well to get better for the rest of the year. Well, Salt Lake had beaten Seattle in the snow in Utah the previous week, so conditions in New England were familiar, if not ideal. The Revs' Adam Buxer struck the post half an hour in and is still to get off the mark in 2022 after scoring 17 in all last season. But goals haven't been a problem for Bruce Arena's team so far, even if Buxer hasn't been providing them. In first half stoppage time, Emmanuel Boateng squeezed the ball in under Zach McMath for the game's opener. But Boateng was duly substituted on the hour mark for one of the Revs' new recruits, Josie Altador. And two minutes later... Josie Altador has his first goal as a member of the Revs. Welcome to the club, Josie. The scene was now very clear for RSL. Less than half an hour remained for them to preserve their own unbeaten start to the season. Eric Holt hit the bar, but not a hand, as he may have thought. Instead, the helping hand was provided by New England's defending. Loney Sergio Cordova picking up on the pieces to roll in his first MLS goal after switching from the Bundesliga in the off-season. Cordova's goal came in the 78th minute, and then in the 88th, Justin Glad's decisive touch brought parity back to proceedings in Massachusetts. The Revs seemingly heading towards the second 2-2 draw of the season, but the end of the storm had not yet fully passed through Gillette Stadium. A winner? Yes, it is. That is unbelievable. Schmidt slides in the snow. The comeback complete. From a whiteout to a wipeout for the Revs. From wintry conditions to the sunshine state, where after a 40-minute wait for the first shot on target for either team, LAFC pounced. Mahala Apuku's deflected finish fired the Californians into the lead against Inter Miami. Not a bad way to score your first MLS goal. The Herons' afternoon went from bad to worse just two minutes later. Breck Shea shown a straight red card for this foul on Brian Rodriguez, who was through on goal. First red card in five years for the midfielder come defender. Adding another problem for Phil Neville, who says he wants more from their star man, Gonzalo Higuain. The black and gold powered through the gale force winds and pouring rain with Christian Arango's stinging effort, edging them closer to their second. They wouldn't have to wait too long either. A free kick from substitute Ishmael Tajuri Shradi went untouched to send unbeaten LAFC to the top of the West. Miami still winless in 2022. Austin FC slammed five past into Miami last weekend and did the same to FC Cincinnati the week before that. The latest proposed prey were the Portland Timbers but an offside deprived Sebastian Driussi of fulfilling their continued hunger for goals. The Timbers have a healthy appetite for them too, but were still chasing a first win. Bill Tuiloma hit the post before the break, but after the restart... Jimmy Chara serving it in, Tuiloma heads it in! And 1-0 it remained, both the scoreline and Austin's goal tally. On a run of 17 regular season matches unbeaten at home, Colorado had plenty to smile about heading into this match against Sporting Kansas City. And the Rapids showed no sign of slowing down. Diego Rubio with a close-range finish to score against his former club. Before Robin Fraser's side provided more reasons to be cheerful. Beta Shaw's there, and it's poked in! And it's Mark Anthony Kelly! The Rapids up to fourth in the West. 
FC Dallas were yet to win under Nico Estevez. Nashville were yet to lose in 2022. But this was a night of change, albeit quite late on into the night at Toyota Stadium. In the final 10 minutes, Paul Ariola was nudged over in the box and Frank O'Hara scored the penalty on his first appearance of the season. But it was someone never seen before in a Dallas shirt that seized the headlines. Record signing, Alan Velasco. Velasco still going, Velasco still going, and a shot attempt for Velasco! And what a debut for the 19-year-old from Argentina! You only get a chance to make a first impression one time! And what an impression! After back-to-back -back draws, Minnesota United were hungry for their first win of the season. But the New York Red Bulls started on the front foot. Last week's hat-trick hero, Lewis Morgan, with this rocket from range. Gerhard Struber's side had a golden opportunity to open the scoring when Hassani Dotson was found guilty of a handball in the area, gifting the Red Bulls a penalty 10 minutes in and the chance to break the deadlock. After video review, Patrick Klamala stepped up to take it, but hat tip to Dane Sinclair, who denied the Polish striker. The Red Bulls were undeterred and went close again. Klamala teeing up Omer Fernandez, but Sinclair once again keeping the loons on level terms. The host's missed chances would prove costly as Minnesota found a breakthrough early in the second half. It was worth the wait too as Dotson's cross led to a sumptuous volley from Luis Amorea. The Red Bulls fought back trying to avoid their first defeat of the campaign. A through ball to Aaron Long could have done it but a block once again from St. Clair saved the Loons. The Canadian goalkeeper hailed the hero of this first win in an unbeaten start to the season for Adrian Heath's Minnesota. Houston's season was yet to take flight. Off the crossbar! You need to score goals to win games. That's what we need to address. And Vancouver will have felt the same. We have to do much more if we want to win games. Could either team get lift off. There's goal! It started! Jonathan Beck, watch this one. Forward comes Dorsey from right back. Ferreira has left it. And it's a decent and tasty looking cross over to the far post. Couldn't quite rise high enough. And that is another testing one. Turned over by Hassel. Vancouver's 22-year-old goalkeeper who has stepped up with the departure of Maxine Cropot. Tabor gives it back to Golds. A give and go is a good one. And the cross is a good one! And there's the opening goal! Brilliant delivery. And finally, Vancouver have the goal they've been looking for. Dahomey switching flanks. Lucas Cavallini with the first goal of the season. Pico. Carasquilla. Here's Corey Baird with a setup. And Darwin Quintero with a tap in. This time they've worked it to perfection. Corey Baird nipping around the back. Cutting it back, and Quintero diving in. The man they call the scientist of goals has got the first goal for Houston this season. Here's Vera. Corey Baird has fielded it, Quintero. He's still got it, Quintero! That's another one of those big saves from Hassel. Darwin Quintero is unplayable right now. Just lost possession. Clumsy, careless turnover. And a quick forward ball for Verera. Oh, that's even better than the first. That is unstoppable from Darren Quintero. A thunderbolt from the Colombian. They are ending this 
wait for a goal in style. Brown. Christian Dahome just caught it before it drifted out of play. Instead, has stood firm. David Casado with the corner, the flick off the bar, and what a great piece of defending that is from Dorsey. Veselinovic puts it goalwards well. No wonder goalkeeper and defender give themselves a big embrace. Griffin Dorsey put his body and his head on the line. That looked like it was a simple header at the far post. Rodriguez, who looked to get the ball back again, he's found Pico. Options both ways. Olfarsson was an option one way. That is a no-nonsense block from Blackman. Couldn't really get out of the way. It's a free kick right on the edge of the area. Four-man wall. Rodriguez off the woodwork. Is there to be something else for them here? Here's Pico. Hassel gets a brave hand on it. And it's the Dynamo with a dynamic display who get themselves up and running. A first three points of the new season. Awesome feeling, but uh, I think uh, we have to praise the group of players that, that step on the field and, and were very disciplined, showed a lot of character, never put their head down when, when you could see the first goal. So very pleased with their performance, uh, very happy for the win, and uh, let's hope that we keep building from this. In the East, it was a home opener for New York City FC and the small matter of a banner unveiled to mark their MLS Cup triumph last year. In snowy conditions at Yankee Stadium, NYCFC found their first goal of the campaign, thanks to a thumping finish from Alexander Callens. Before a Montreal defensive error gifted the host their second of the game. Santi Rodriguez, top of the box, looks to Chip Preza, and he does it! Santi Rodriguez, what finesse, and it is 2-0 New York City. Montreal tried to make up for their mistakes, staging a fight back as the Canadians hit the post before substitute Zachary Brogiar fired his shot wide. Three minutes later, the visitors did cut the citizens' lead to one. A dangerous run from Georgi Mihailovic gave Brogiar a second chance to pull one back and poke home his third career MLS goal. Due to the conditions, an orange ball had to be used. NYCFC made sure it was in the back of the Montreal net next, extending their lead through Brazilian Thales Magno, his first of the campaign. Another mistake put it on a plate for the hosts. NYCFC's Brazilian contingent coming up with the goods once more. Andrade into the area, takes the shot. Thiago Andrade makes it 4-1. Providing the champions with the first win of their title defence. Toronto FC completing the trio of Canadian sides on the road this week. And like Montreal and Vancouver, they too were yet to win. They threatened change early on, though, in the Trillium Cup. Jesus Jimenez with his second in as many games. Many have wondered when we'd begin to see the impact of Bob Bradley's arrival in the off-season, and perhaps it was here. Luca Petrasso continued the early TFC impetus. This was the first time Toronto had led in a game all season, and hanging on to that uncommon position was becoming tough. Jonathan Mensah went close after the restart, but Caleb Porter's Columbus have goals in them. Four against Vancouver in their opener, three last week at San Jose, and a common denominator who had scored in both. Celebration! Now four goals in three games for the crew's piece of goals. And just beyond the hour, a winner for the hosts. Derek Etienne, the scorer, and with a fitting celebration to former teammate Bradley Wright Phillips, who retired last week, having notched 117 of his own in MLS. A first ever meeting between Atlanta United and Charlotte FC and the potential for a new MLS rivalry in the South. The host threatened first, but Christiane Kalina denied Atlanta an early lead. 
Newcomers Charlotte FC, who have lost their opening two games in MLS, held on until Christian McCoon brought down Brooks Lennon in the box. Penalty for Atlanta and a chance to break the deadlock on the hour mark. Joseph Martinez had netted against every MLS team he's faced apart from Nashville prior to the weekend. Add Charlotte his list of victims. Six minutes later, a special moment for 19-year-old Adam Armour from North Carolina, who wrote himself into Charlotte folklore. To the middle, headed, goal, 1-1, first ever goal for Charlotte FC. But the five stripes responded, catching Charlotte on the counter with Martinez at the heart of the attack again. Kalina's fingertip save denied the Venezuelan a second of the match. The expansion side were two minutes away from their first point in MLS, only for their hearts to be broken in this budding rivalry. Marcelino Moreno's brilliant pass allowed Jake Mulraney to score a stoppage time winner for Atlanta in a dramatic second home win of the season. Tough one for Charlotte, but plenty of positives nonetheless. It wasn't just 14 consecutive MLS games without a win for FC Cincinnati, they'd also lost each and every one of them. So Orlando would rightly have been rocked by this. Vasquez, Cincinnati takes the lead. Brandon Vasquez providing his team's first goal of 2022. But as to be expected, Orlando were on the offensive almost immediately. Alexander Pato unaware though that the stage wasn't going to be his tonight, but that of opposing goalkeeper Alec can. Mind you, Pato might have begun to see the emerging picture shortly afterwards. Flips in Cara! What a save by Can! Are you kidding me? New boy Erjan Cara must have wondered whether all MLS goalkeepers were like this. Junior Urso then tested Can's reflexes with the same outcome. And all of this occurring inside the opening 26 minutes, by the way. Unfortunately for those in orange, their failure to protect their shot stopper would have a consequence. Urso this time went low, and the Lions had their long overdue leveller. But the trend that had gone before went off piste. The side with the longest losing run in MLS history regained their precious advantage. Vazquez again, and the protagonists at either end of the pitch for Cincinnati became clear. A first win of Pat Noonan's reign was ensured when Antonio Carlos's late header was beaten away. Cincinnati can win. Truly the story of the game. DC United's win in Cincinnati last week had them on maximum points going into their home date with the Chicago Fire. The Capital Club started strong. Ola Kamara going close, his header cleared off the line. A reprieve for the Fire. The visitors kicked into gear and soon enough their efforts were rewarded. Chicago capitalised on a DC mistake with Stanislav Ivanov scoring the first goal of the Ezra Hendrickson era. The fire looks red hot with their second coming from a Jonathan Bornstein volley. That's his first MLS strike in two years, giving Hendrickson his maiden win as Chicago boss. To our final game and Philadelphia's Jim Curtin with the chance to make it 100 MLS regular season wins as a coach. Nathan Harriel close to his very first MLS goal. San Jose scored twice late on last week to grab a dramatic point against Columbus, but we're going to need some restoration work again at Subaru Park after Corey Burke's goal midway through the first half. The Quakes were unwittingly challenging themselves. After the break, Jackson Yule's outstretched right arm caught the attention of the referee, and he used his own to award the Union a penalty. Here's Gazdak striking, goal! Two nothing Union! Fittingly, a Penenka brought up the century for Curtin. That win lifts the Union up to second in the East, level on points with Columbus, the new leaders. Chicago, the only other remaining unbeaten team in the conference, they're in sixth while Charlotte and Montreal await their first points of the year. It's LAFC who now top the Western Conference. Goal difference separates them from RSL with both on seven points 
Portland and Minnesota in sixth and seventh respectively also remain unbeaten. Whilst a moment of history wasn't quite enough for the new boys. Goal! 1-1! First ever goal for Charlotte Pepsi! RSL were in their elements against the elements. Lays it back. A winner? Yes, it is. That is unbelievable. And there was a dream debut in Dallas. You only get a chance to make a first impression one time. And what an impression for Alan Velasco. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.